ever feel like giving up on your dreams when you feel life is just falling and breaking down on you? Yeah, we've all been there. Today's guest is Brianne Freeman, who has turned her trauma into triumph. You will learn her story and tips on how she's dramatically transformed her mindset, her body becoming a fitness bikini competitor and now champion beat depression has become a successful cookbook author and has overcome divorce through heartbreak trauma this is an episode you don't want to miss so stay tuned because Brienne is about to come on you're now tuned in to get inspired with jason rosell the podcast and youtube show the Get Inspired with Jason Roselle show brings you amazing topics and a variety of guests ranging from celebrities, reality stars, social media influencers, entrepreneurs, and major success stories. You're going to gain a large amount of knowledge and priceless advice. It doesn't matter if it's in childhood trauma, anxiety, depression, raising up and leveling up your business. The Get Inspired show is going to get you thriving. So if you're ready to transform your life in all areas, get ready because the show starts now. Brianne, what's up, girl? Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Jason. So nice to see you. Girl, we've been friends for a long time and this was about to finally happen. Yeah. It's been years and years in making. Yeah. Long time. Yeah. Long time. So much has happened. So much has prevailed. Um, my audience is, uh, they're geared up. You know, I've been putting a little teasers out here and there and they're like, hold on, how do I look like Brianne? How do I overcome trauma, divorce trauma for that matter, depression, cruelty, right? We'll leave it at that. <laughs> Anxiety off the wahoo. And mind you, I just want to give a disclosure, ladies and gentlemen, I am not a doctor, nor is Brianne. We're just giving our personal heart to heart stories, obviously tips, to get you moving and grooving. So why don't you break it down for us a little bit, Brianne? How, how do people see you and obviously assume saying, okay, she looks genetically like a Barbie muscular bikini competitor. How did it all start for you? How did, how did you get here physically first? Uh, physically? Um, well, you know what? Working out and nutrition has always been a very, it's been a, a lifelong passion for me, but for most people, you know, there's, there's so much misinformation out there that we're guiding in all like these crazy directions, foods we need to cut out, you know, things we need to avoid, things we have to be eating. So, you know, me just along with probably everybody else in your audience, I was very confused about nutrition and working out and what it took. So actually during the pandemic, uh, I decided I was going to get a nutrition certification. Um, you know, I had a, a lot of things in mind. I, and it pretty much validated all of my beliefs. So you know, through the pandemic, I was practicing what I was preaching. I was practicing what I was reading through my nutrition certification. And that made the biggest difference in my physique. So that actually led me into writing a book called Master Your Macros, which I'm sure we can get to next. But um, nutrition is the biggest thing when it comes to, to our physique. So that was really my starting point when it comes to making the biggest transformation in my physique was, was that. Absolutely. What would you say is harder for uh, you and the most common male and females out there? Is it the nutrition or the working out? Nutrition, nutrition by far is it's, it's easy for, for us to, you know, if we're working out at home, we're working out a gym to go, you know, get some movement in. I think a lot of people, especially if you've been working out for a while, you enjoy that. But you know what? We also really enjoy very tasty food. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that is the hardest part because a lot of people think that they have to just eat chicken and broccoli if they're going to get the body they've always dreamed of. And that's actually not true either. Um, so nutrition by far the hardest part for me, the hardest part for, you know, all of my followers. Um, I would imagine you would agree. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, hello. I mean, I was overweight for 20 plus years. I get it. And, and you know, for me personally, I feel 80% of what we all look like is what we eat. 10% mm -hmm. is the workouts and 10% is genetics. Why do I say that for me personally? Because even though I've done, I've been on covers of magazines, shirtless and all that fun stuff in the years that have come by, I still to this day have loose skin, not a lot, 
and some stretch marks. And that's never going to go away unless I do a surgery and I don't want to do a surgery. I refuse, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so I get it. Now, when someone's looking at you, I mean, you know, let's take a look right now. If you guys are watching, uh, you know, Brienne was never obese, you know, but she was definitely, you were a lot heavier at one point, right? Yeah, I was, my heaviest point, I was probably about 20 pounds heavier. I'm 5'2". Yeah. I'm, I'm a short girl. So 20 pounds on me is a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, it, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I was, I was 20 pounds heavier at my heaviest weight. And that's because I was working out like crazy, but I was eating everything too. I wasn't, I wasn't tracking my food. I didn't understand nutrition. And when I thought I did, I clearly didn't. Um, so that, that made the biggest difference for me and in, in how I lost the weight over the years. And it took a while. 20 pounds takes a while. It's that's, it's not an easy feat to lose 20 pounds. And not, you know that too. hundred percent. And what do you, what do you, or do you disagree with me? I tell people, cause people ask me, Jason, you're 42. You are in better shape than you were in your twenties, which I am, which I still can't believe sometimes. And mm -hmm. I tell people, yes, it's a lifestyle and you have to be addicted to it. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's just me. I'm addicted to feeling good, looking good. And I don't do it for nobody anymore. I just do it for myself. Yeah. Would you agree or disagree with that? Yeah. You know, because the things that you do, this is where a lot of people get it wrong when it comes to, you know, losing weight and changing their body composition. They think they're going to do some fad diet. Mm -hmm. They're going to eliminate everything that they love and they're going to lose some weight. But guess what? Once they start going back to their old ways, they're going to end up back where they were, maybe even a worse position. And that's what happens with probably most I think about 85% of people who lose weight can't keep it off within a year because yeah. of that. You have to figure out how it becomes a lifestyle. How you're losing the weight is how you're going to keep it off ultimately. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, whether you're any profession in life or any relationship in life, one thing is getting there, right? You get the physique, say you become a famous artist, right? Say you become a well-known or successful lawyer, it could be any industry, or even the relationship of your dreams. That is where the consistency takes mm -hmm. place, right? Mm -hmm. That's when you work harder. You know, one of my favorite mentors uh, that I've met a few times at Tony Robbins events, Pitbull, believe it or not, yes, that guy is someone that comes from the streets and he tells you, dude, hey, I have a hot freaking album come out right when it starts getting hot is when I work harder. Because that moment that you get comfortable is when you lose it all you lose it. That's so true. That, that's, that's a good way to apply it to anything in life. It's that's so true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's make it fun for the audience. Right. So we've talked clearly food, food is basically close to almost everything for you to succeed, to look and feel awesome. Talk mm -hmm. to me briefly about your two books and one that just recently came out. Well, this is the biggest thing is people want to eat the stuff that taste good that tastes amazing the things that you think that you shouldn't eat you want to eat pizza and burgers and ice cream and cakes and whether you have a sweet tooth a savory tooth whatever it is that's what you want to eat so that was my inspiration i created actually i have three books one is called master your macro so it's teaching you it's it's the education behind how to change your body mm -hmm. with the recipes and then after that i launched you know two more books one called sweet eats one savory eats mm -hmm. and the premise behind all of it is high protein, low calorie versions of the food that you love. So these are the foods that are going to get you the body of your dreams without feeling deprived. These, this is what helps consistency, not feeling deprived. So that was the inspiration behind creating wow. all of the books that I've done. Um, very proud of them. I made them personally. I photographed them. I, I've done everything with them. And even savory is my newest one, which is obviously all savory food. I have a, a big vegan and vegetarian section too, because when it comes to that kind of lifestyle, it becomes a little harder to eat, meet your protein goals and, you know, keep calories down. So it was, it was, that was probably one of the biggest challenges for me, but I'm very, very, very proud of them. The recipes are amazing. Yeah. And they look no, amazing. They have they a problem hitting their protein goal. Let me tell you that. Yeah. They look freaking amazing. I, yeah. I mean, I've only tried uh, a few in the past, it was your first book. And I got to tell you, the fat boy in me did not feel fat afterwards, but I was satisfied, girl. 
Yes, it, that is the point. You want to you want to look forward to what you eat, and yeah. that's it's a consistency. And if you look forward to the things, they're going to help you reach your goals and help you maintain those goals. Yeah, that's a win. Yeah, that's a win. A, it's a win, win, win. So check this out. What would you say to someone? And you know, I, I get a lot of uh, negative. Uh, 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 follower sometimes that just when I say negative and, and you know who I'm I'm calling you out because there's a few of you out there oh well I have a lot of gut issues what do you have something for the gut issues do you have you what do you do because everybody I'm not perfect I have my own issues we all have but what's what do we do with someone that has say a lot of gut issues is there a section or any recommendations within your books that they feel more at ease you know what when it comes to the very specific things like that I always say talk to your doctor because like yeah. you said, we're not doctors. I'm not here to diagnose anybody. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not here to tell you what to eat to to fix your gut because you know what? I everyone is so unique where when it comes to stuff like that, that I'm yeah. But yeah. I, I steer clear of, of, of providing this type of a hundred percent. And that's what I say as well. Cause at the end of the day, what works for one person does not work for everybody. It just doesn't. You know, for me personally. When people ask me, how did you get, you know, overall lean while still having mass, you know, and I still eat burgers and pizza. I could be a lot more. I could be probably close to as lean as as you are if I really wanted to. It's just that to me, I'm, I just I I'm a fatty McPatty deep inside still. And I'm OK with that. And that's what the recipes are good for. I know. <laughs> this, is why, this is why honestly i'm i'm excited for the audiences to really dive deep into these because you know you have so many you know mm -hmm. again you got somebody that has a major sweet tooth boom check mark you got someone yeah. that likes that that salty delicious savory food check mark right mm -hmm. we got an answer for everybody so yeah. guys if you have uh any uh, questions on these, make sure you drop it on the comments because me or Brianna are going to make sure we answer them. Now, let's let's switch gears a little bit. Let's switch gears a little bit. Let's do it. What do we do when we're going? What do you do when we're going through a lot of stress, right? Mentally, emotionally, and your brain saying, Brianna, you, 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 you don't get out of bed. Just don't get out of bed. I don't want you to work out. Just give in forget this, just order dominoes. It's easy. What, what do you, how do you navigate yourself? You know what depression and anxiety and going through traumatic life experiences is it's very different for everybody. I've, you know, I personally gone through it, dealt with it in my, my way of dealing with it was actually turning to the gym because that was my comfort. That was my comfort place. That was what I knew. That's what I was familiar with. So it was like the only thing that got me out of my house was going to the gym. Now, somebody else, if that's not part of like their lifestyle and their comfort, then yeah, maybe they're going to order pizza. They're going to stay in bed. They're going to do different things to cope with, you know, whatever's going on inside their heart and inside of their, their brain. Um, but I, I think the number one thing when it comes to overcoming traumatic life experiences is turning to your friends, not closing yourself down. You have to open up. You have to talk about your feelings. You need to reach out to your loved ones. Mm -hmm. You need to get different perspectives and you need to feel loved because a lot of times we're going through this stuff because we, we don't feel loved. We've been, you know, shoved away, you know, someone has pushed us away that, that we really love. And, and, we, you know, we put, we put our whole life into. So yeah. my, my biggest thing is open up open up to your friends, open up to the people that you trust because you have to get those feelings out. You have to get your emotions out. And it's sometimes it helps to get a different perspective from somebody else that you love and you trust. And it takes time. Mm -hmm. You have to go through the feelings. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't distract yourself from the feelings. You can't, you know, you can't run away from them. You have to face them dead on. Yeah. And you, you have to try to understand them and you have to take responsibility for them and work through them. It's, it's such a, it's such a big topic, such a big topic. Um, you know, oh, yeah, it's like, it's a yeah, yeah. It's, it's a massive whirlwind. And like, my mind is just going, cause yeah, I and know some people have gone through things and, and they deal with it differently. It's, it's so individualized. Talk to the therapist if you don't have friends. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, we're going to talk about 
obviously your traumatic divorce a little bit. We're going to talk about how you became a, a fitness bikini a competitor champion. Uh, but I think just to align and clarify the audience sometimes, like Brand just said, we all go through different things. We all deal with things differently, right? Do Should we talk to awesome friends to feel loved and be elevated? Absolutely. I agree. Should we also talk to a therapist, a life coach like myself, somebody to hold you accountable, give you tools to work on yourself? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But the biggest takeaway before we dive deeper is learning to love yourself, right? Fully. And all the love that you're used to giving somebody else, whether it's your significant other, your family, you got to pour it into you always and forever. That's it. Because Without loving yourself and knowing how to fulfill yourself, you're always going to be reliant on somebody, right? Wouldn't you agree? That is, you you said it so well. I couldn't have said that better. Yes. Everything you just said. Yes. And I, I learned that the hard way, which is why I'm passionate about helping people that are broken down because mm -hmm. we all are fucked up in different ways. We really yeah. are. Yeah. And as long as we're purposeful and we do something mindful about it daily, we get better, not bitter. Because most people, if they don't have these tools, Brandon, you know this because you've succeeded quite a bit, they become very resentful mm -hmm. and very bitter and they get nasty. They get yeah. nasty. But those nasty people is people that they're like, this is me. Accept me for who I am. And we can sit here and point, oh, well, they have a, a, a borderline personality disorder. They're narcissistic personality. We can sit here and blame shift. You know what? Karma takes care of that. I'm yeah. not worried about that. Yeah. You went through a very traumatic divorce, and it, 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 it was a major storm, to leave it, lack of a better word, a major yeah. storm. Yes. It was unexpected. It was brutally just something that you went through that broke you down walk us through the journey and help the audience understand what was your lowest moment in your life at that time and how did you come up for air and said i got this oh my gosh you know this this was the the biggest life changing event I've ever gone through. It was it was an unexpected divorce. I was I was caught off guard, so that's what made it a lot more traumatized. It wasn't something that I was prepared for. Um, literally, my entire world was pulled out from under me. So I had to start over a hundred percent. I had to get a new place to live. I had to essentially find new friends, and it. It's it's such a hard thing to describe for people that haven't gone through something like that. And there's a, probably a lot of people in your audience who, mm -hmm. yeah, they understand. At my lowest point through that, it was probably, you know, within the first six months, I became severely depressed, overwhelmed with anxiety, and suicidal. There were so many nights I went to bed wishing I wouldn't wake up. Probably almost every night for the first, at least the first six months, I prayed don't let me wake up because facing reality, facing the pain that my heart was going through was, I've always said, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. It was for me, the most traumatizing life experience. But what I told myself, like when I, when I didn't want to wake up, I'm like, this is not me. I know this is not me. This is not who I am. I've never had thoughts like this before. I'm going to be better than this. And that's what I told myself. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to make myself proud. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to prove that I am worthy of love. I'm worthy of my own love. I am, I'm beautiful. I'm strong. I'm capable. And that's what drove me was that internal little fire, you know, even through the storm in my mind, like not wanting to wake up, but then there was like the devil and the angel, you know, the angel was a little bit stronger. And she said, yes. you're, you're going to get through this. You were going to prove yourself worthy. You're going to make yourself proud. Yeah. yeah. That, that is what got me through it. And I did everything I possibly could to get my, my mind on the other side and to make myself proud. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 
Wow. I commend you so much, Brianne. Uh, I, my, I feel a lot of energy. I felt you. So I'm, I'm a bit emotional. So I get, Ooh, I felt that. I'm sure others have felt that. <laughs> and a lot of times we want to go in the past, right? What went wrong and recycle, right? Especially, you know, even, and look, guys, I'm, I'm, I want to make this clear on behalf of myself and Brianne, like, we're not here to talk trash about my bad experiences, her bad experiences. We're just here to give light that there is light at the end of the tunnel, right? Mm -hmm. No matter what you go through, because I have a lot of people and I'm sure they message you as well. My best friend, my mom, my dad, my ex-husband, my ex-wife, they're manipulative. They're a grandiose narcissist. They're a covert narcissist, right? They have a borderline personality disorder. Regardless of what, and I know you've been through the psychological, because God knows I have. I've had many great relationships that turn sour. Mm -hmm. We can go back and study, but that is one of the worst things you can do because when you go back, you got to remember and correct me if I'm wrong, that that was just an illusion. That's not truly who they are. Sometimes it's, it's a mask that falls off, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want people to be okay with saying, look, a lot of people have chemical imbalances. They have issues. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It's up to them to do whatever, but you got one life. Yeah. You got one body, right? You got to make it your best life. So it's up to you to a set up healthy boundaries, especially if it's your mom, your dad, because we, we can't, we can't get rid of the mom and dad, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Brothers, sisters. But if it's something that, you know, you know, it's your partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it is to you. And you are having just dreadful dreadful moments almost every other day and it's getting progressively worse it's up to you to do what you have to do yeah 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 it's true in in obviously we can't change them we can reflect on what we did in the relationship oh my god yeah once once our mind is clear we can say okay what what can i take responsibility for yes what did what did i what could i have done better and that's what i've done in my own experience now that my mind is is clear. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not going through the trauma anymore. I can look back and be honest with myself. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. could I have done better? It doesn't mean it's going to change anything, but I want to learn for the next relationship. I want to learn for myself. How am I going to grow from this experience personally? Cause like you said, it's up to us. Yeah. We we're going to become stronger. We're going to become better people through this as long as we choose to. Yeah. So that's what I've done myself. What can, what can I, what can I take responsibility for and how can I grow? So that way my next relationship, I don't, maybe I don't present these failures. Cause for me, I'm like, yeah, there, there was a couple of failures on my part that I take responsibility for. Oh, me too. I was far from perfect. And mm -hmm. when I say far from perfect, we all live and learn. Right. And, and I had my mistakes, but like you, like you just said, Brian, it's, I feel number one, forgive yourself, right? Forgive yourself for not knowing any better because we mm -hmm. didn't, right? Mm -hmm. Come on, yeah. we're still young. We're still adapting. We're learning like who we are, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's very easy as humans to point the finger. My ex did this, this, this. Okay, great. We know that. But what did you do? Because I can take the blame. Look, I enabled, I enabled a lot of my past relationships because I was being reactive to how they were speaking to me sometimes. Mm -hmm. And knowing what I know now, if somebody were to talk to me in any condescending or negative way, I would not react to it. I'd be like, okay, there's an issue here and it's not me. <laughs> right? Yeah. Something, we sit back, we have our popcorn and we're saying, okay, something is, I need to exit. Bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And it's because you took the time to like reflect and think about that. Yep. And how you would react in the future. Cause now, yep. you know, you've, you've studied yourself yes. and that's, that's how we grow is learning from ourself and our behavior. Cause yeah, there's a lot of things I didn't know about myself that now I know. Oh, now God. I know. And now there's probably red flags that I never would have picked up on before that. I'm probably pretty sure I'm on high alert for now. So yeah. Thank you guys. Write that down. Seriously. What she just said is so much 
golden nuggets and value. Seriously, like, wow. When you know, now I'm getting all Shakespeare, when you know thyself, <laughs> right? <laughs> when you know thyself, you understand who you are. You observe your thoughts before acting on your thoughts. Isn't that beautiful, right? Yeah. You yeah. observe it before acting on it. And then say the next time you get in a relationship or whatever, that's how I was telling the audience is stop the blame game. Like, oh, they were X, Y, Z. That's great. I get it. It hurts still. I get it. Mm -hmm. Get over the sequence of, oh, but we had all these good times. That was literally honeymoon, love bombing stages. Get over that stuff. Seriously. It wasn't real. That's not who they were. Yeah. Present. If you meet someone today, tomorrow, again, it doesn't matter at what level. Get to truly know somebody, right? Mm -hmm. Don't rush the honeymoon stages, right? Mm -hmm. Understand their fears. Understand their triggers. Maybe yeah. they have major trauma because triggers are trauma that they still have to work through. Hey, you know what? Maybe right now is not the best time to date. You know, go yeah. work on yourself, right? Yeah. Just yeah. like Brienne works on her body, she works on her mindset and emotions to be fulfilling and appealing for somebody that also has put in the work because the number one red flag in relationships, ladies and gentlemen, and Brianne, I think you can attest to that, is if only one person is putting in the work. Because mm -hmm. if the other's not, the relationship is set for catastrophe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know? All right, so we only have five minutes left. Brianne, tell, tell the audience, you are now, and I want it to use in your own words, you're a, a fitness bikini competitor champion. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Con freaking congratulations, seriously. Thank you. That's so amazing. So amazing. If anybody wants to get to that level, right, I'm sure they can hire a coach and just the many things that you've done and they can follow your journey. Please, everybody, if you're not following Brian, the links are right below. But what would you tell somebody that wants to do this? Why? What did you get out of it and why they should if they want to? Because this is not for the faint of heart. I, I couldn't do it. Yeah. No, this is for me. This was me proving to myself that I can do hard things. That was how I presented myself because it's hard. Yeah. It's the regimen. I mean, depending on wherever your starting point is, is going to depend how long of this journey, you know, it's going to, it's going to take you, you know, picking a show, working backwards to say, how much fat do I need to lose? How much muscle do I need to build? What do I need to work on to fit into, you know, whatever category it is that, that you want to enter into and you have to be committed to it. Yeah. This is, and this is, like I said, for me, it was proven to myself, I can do hard things. Yeah. The, the mental and the physical strength to get through something like that, just as in a traumatizing life experience, these things build you up. Like I said, they, that, that is the thing you have to be so prepared to struggle, prepared to fail, Yeah. prepared to even gosh, be sad. And like maybe some, some choices you made in meals, because you know what we all like to eat. And not only that, you, uh, how vulnerable can you be? I mean, the, anybody, but yeah. you're putting yourself on a stage in front of hundreds, if not thousands of people, you're not, you don't know if you're going to win. You don't know exactly, but you are living. Cause like I tell people, what's on the other side of fear is freedom. Right. And, mm -hmm. and when you have that freedom, of saying, I did this, no matter if you won or lose, you still won, but you actually won. <laughs> like, this is like, so surreal, right? So yeah. just like how, like we said in the beginning of the episode, turning trauma into triumph mm -hmm. is what you did. And anybody, yeah, anybody can do that. So guys, tell them, Brianne, st tell them to get out of the damn pain. I moved through it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Move through it. You have to, you have to move through it. You have to face it in order to grow, to become better. Yeah. 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 And lastly, you know, I mean, come on, you and I, we're, no one's perfect. What do you do? What do you do when you get those sad moments? Cause it comes, right. We get those little moments, right. It's like, uh, I always tell my buddy, Rob, I'm like to me, cause I I'm an anxious person. I'll, I'll get like the anxious little monster comes in the corner. He's like, Jason, it's time to overthink. I'm like, Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> like, I don't want to overthink. <laughs> what, what do you tell your little monster? 
<laughs> or your or your depressed little mo- we'll call it the depressed monster Donnie, and then the anxious one we'll call him Anthony. <laughs> what do you tell you them? I I personally like to just think about the things that I have that I'm grateful for, the yeah. things that I've done, like I said, to make myself proud. Um, it doesn't fill those voids, but just knowing that I'm working on myself, I'm I'm working to become a better person, a better human, yeah, um, all around, inside and out. I, you know, I just have to remind myself of that, of the, the things I've already overcome and knowing that whatever I'm overthinking is not doing me any justice. I have to catch myself or call a friend, call a friend and talk it through. And they're, they're probably more likely than not going to talk you out of it, talk some sense into you, let you know that you're overthinking, you know, whatever it is that's going on in your mind, because those moments, they come up out of nowhere. I still face them. Oh, yeah. I, I think everybody at there's no cure, right? We're always healing. Mm-hmm. We're always just like again, just like looking good and working out. It's not a short term fix, guys. Yeah, this yeah. is this is daily and weekly. Like mm-hmm. if you follow Brienne, this girl's always if she's not cooking or you know meal prepping, she's uh, at the gym. If she's not with the gym, she's giving herself TLC. You know, going on a vacation. If she's not with the vacation, she's with the kitty cats. You know, yeah. like it's do 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 do. But notice she's being busy, but being productively busy. Right? Mm-hmm. There's a big difference. A lot of people numb themselves. Right? Mm-hmm. Let me just drink it all the way. Right? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know. Or I get this a lot of a lot of my relationship coaching clients, they'll tell me like, man, I, you know, I ended up my marriage after whatever, 13, 14 years. And I went on a binger like I was going out drinking. I was sleeping with random people. And I'm like, dude, that's the worst thing you could do. <laughs> that's the worst thing you could do because we're numbing. Right. We're numbing yeah. what we feel. Yeah. Yeah. But you did the opposite, which is I tell people do it the healthy way because love, love. Love is so beautiful, you know, and and when you live in love, fear just dissipates. It really does. Right. Mm -hmm. It just love conquers as cliche as it sounds all. And when you love yourself and you treat yourself with the respect that you deserve, you will attract those people. Right. That's going to fill you up. But remember, even even you, Brand, you may meet the love of your life whenever, tomorrow, next month, next year. But we will never rely on them to fill our cup. Exactly. Exactly. Now, Thank can you. I get a what? What? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> can I get a what? What? Crazy. Um, Brian, any last? Oh, I, oh, I got to ask you fun. We got two minutes. If you can have any superpower, any superpower, what would it be? I would, I would fly. I don't know why. I'd love to fly. Like I've been making this a childhood dream. <laughs> Just go anywhere I want to, when I want to, get over <laughs> LA, <laughs> back the streets, Ooh. fly over them. <laughs> I love it. I, I love think it. either that or maybe time travel. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I would like to be a, my superhero. So, and I change my answer sometimes as a ghost. I know it sounds crazy, but imagine being able to really understand what people, how they really feel about you, what they're saying. And I'm like, hmm. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. yeah. Is that how you really feel? <laughs> like a mind reader? Yeah. Right? Trippy. Yeah. Trippy. Yeah. That actually, that might be devastating to be a mind reader. But I know, yeah. right? It's like, yeah. no, <laughs> it's okay. You know what? It, it's, it, it's all good. Cause you know, at the end of the day, when you're a good person, and you lead by example, you know, that's all that matters. Cause anyone that hurts you hurts us as individuals, they got to live with it because karma has a humongous and I mean, humongous menu. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. saying, just saying, Brianne Freeman, thank you so much for being on today's get inspired podcast. I have nothing but love for you. You're awesome. Thank you for being you. Thank you for the friendship. And thank you for inspiring thousands each and every year. Make sure you guys follow her, get her cookbooks. And if you have any questions, drop a comment. And as always, keep it caliente. Thanks, Brianne. 
Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're a new viewer, and don't forget to click on the bell so you can get notifications every time a new show releases. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and feel free to leave your comments. I'm Jason Roselle, and you're watching Get Inspired with Jason.